comment for that. Uh, a couple of people already on YouTube brought to you by Quality Plumbing. Want to know about, are we doing a bracket challenge? Yes. Uh, Zach will post that. Uh, you have a couple more hours to get it in before the first game tips off. Gators play Colorado tomorrow at 430, right around 430. Might not start exactly at 430, but they got the Colorado Buffaloes. I love the matchup. And uh, we'll go from there. Uh, real quick, Russell says, good morning, Shane. A really nice and classy gesture from Bruce Pearl and Auburn. Do you think we they would have still done it if Todd Golden did not have such a tight relationship with Pearl? Uh, hard to say, uh, but that's his mentor. And they have a great relationship. And you got to like what Auburn did in that video. Let's go to the Titan Moore Highline, courtesy of Comfort Temp. And we're joined by, as I mentioned, our college football analyst and Heisman Trophy voter. I'm sure he's breaking down tape already, looking at his Heisman candidates for next year, Brent Beard. Good morning, Brent. How you doing? Well, uh, I'm doing well. Good to be with you. It, um, uh, this is just a great time of year uh, with uh, spring practice, but uh, basically open for all the teams. Uh, but I'm sure by the end of the week for football and uh, starting today, uh, I've I have always said this might be the four best days of sports of the whole year uh, in many ways. So excited for the tournament. Uh, I think the Gators will, will will go a long way, frankly, in this thing. So excited to see what, what they do and what the SEC teams do. There's no question. It all starts today. Uh, a lot of sitting around watching basketball. Reggie on Facebook Live brought to you by Mel also. Shane, I did two loops at the Valspar Pro-Am yesterday. You had Taylor Moore, K.H. Kim, Gary Sheffield, and Corey Kluber. Yeah, my uh, my son. The, you, you were uh, caddying, like serious caddy. My son was just caddying with Kyle Trask, just goofing around. So, um, Brent, uh, what's interesting are the 2025 SEC football schedules came out yesterday. Um. I can't remember how it's worked in the past, but basically we're playing the same SEC schedule. You just flip home and away. Yes. And yes. Um, is that what they've done in the past? I can't remember. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, it really just kind of de uh, uh, depends. They've done some different things, but I think to make it easier for everybody, they announced yesterday that, uh, just as you said, as far as a conference, it would just flip from uh, if it was home last year, it'll be away in, in 2025. Um, so they had this two-year plan to basically go with an eight-game schedule. Now, we don't know yet what they're going to do uh, in 2026. Um, as we mentioned uh, a few weeks ago, there's been some talk in the media from different people uh, and even some athletic directors that uh, in 2026, the league would go to nine. We don't know that yet. They're not ready to announce it. But yes, uh, in uh, basically whoever you're a fan of, uh, look at the schedule this year and just uh, for the SEC uh, in your mind, just go to um, – whatever is opposite on the schedule for next year, if that, um, if that makes sense. And I think it probably does. Yeah. I'm excited. We play at in Oxford. So, uh, the, the last time we played oh, in yeah. Oxford, it was during COVID and nobody could go. And it's one of the, the best, uh, away trips in the league. So a lot of our fans will enjoy going to Oxford for that game. But again, the Gators are going to Texas A&M for some damn reason. I, I just don't understand it. Um, when Georgia's only – Georgia has not even been to College Station. Correct. Since they've been Correct. in the damn league. It's crazy. It, it is. It, yeah, and people haven't uh, heard that. I, I, I know they do at some point. But, um, uh, yes, Georgia still has yet to go uh, to Texas A&M. Now that, now, that is something, for the league's credit, Sankey has been very clear about this. Uh, he said uh, in the in the upcoming um, years uh, that they want to change that. So since 2012, Florida's played a &M four times, traveled to College Station three times. That number will reach five in 2024 and six in 2025. Georgia's played a &M once 
since they joined the SEC and has never been to College Station. So uh, hopefully they will get that uh, straight now because that is a uh, that is not a good look for the schedule maker. Yeah, John mentions here on Facebook Live, brought to you by Mel Law. Another mystery is the Florida Auburn series. It's been a long time since we we played Auburn. It seems like, and they're the closest thing school to us. Yeah, uh, that's true. So, anyway, um, Brent, the uh, TV deals are wrapped up for the college football playoffs. Give us a, a rundown. Of what's going to happen there? Yeah, uh, th- there's been a lot going on this um, this week. Uh, frankly, with all of that, um, ESPN and the college football playoff, they have finalized an agreement, six-year extension through 2031, $1.3 billion average annually. Uh, so uh, they they needed to get that straightened out. They got the money straightened out for who, who gets what with the uh, conferences, too. Um, uh, a couple things here real quick. Um, the... Um, the money average right now is SEC twenty three point six million a year. The Big Ten will be twenty million per year. Uh, ACC thirteen million uh, a year. Big Twelve eleven million. Notre Dame still getting their money. Um, uh, without a doubt, they'll get, they'll get more more money if they qualify. Now, I thought this was significant. The college football national championship game in 26 and 27 is going to be on ABC. It's not going to be on cable. It's going to be on ABC. And that's the first time that's happened since 2010. Um, So, uh, look, not everybody has cable um, for one reason or another. There are people who don't. So, the championship game being on cable, being uh, not on cable, is a big deal. And for instance, uh, I need to go back and check this, but I believe the the basketball championship game that we're going to see uh, uh, the first Monday in, in April, I think, is on TBS. Yeah, it, it has been the last few years. They've carried yeah. the uh, the game, the the national championship. They, I think they've carried the Final Four. I could be yeah. wrong about that, but I know the national championship game's been on TBS the right. last few but years. They they really need to put that on CBS, and they need to start it about an hour earlier instead of this nine twenty garbage uh, that they have for years. So I won't belabor, belabor the point there, but I uh, just wanted to throw the money out and the fact that the championship game is coming back. Uh, it will be on ABC. Yeah. Uh, and, and again, there's still talk of, of expansion. Uh, I mean, it seems like it's just going to go on and on and on. And obviously, um, I do know this, and I may have brought it up on the program, Brent. When I was in Atlanta for the SEC championship weekend, they had that Legends thing, and yeah, they did a wonderful job, the SEC. But Greg Sankey was a part of that at a lot of our events, and it was kind of just an uh, open floor discussion with everybody there. You could ask questions, and somebody asked him about, do you plan on expanding the SEC anymore? And he said, no. He said, but if we do down the road, it's three teams they're looking at, or three schools, I should say. It's North Carolina, Virginia, and Clemson. Yep. Um, yep. Those are the only potential additions to the conference if and when that happens. It will not be Florida State. I don't even think it will be Clemson. I think it's Virginia and North Carolina. Uh, yep. What can you I tell agree. us? What are you hearing? No, I agree with that. Uh, I think that's accurate. Now, the the game, the money changer and the game changer would be Notre Dame. I mean, if Notre Dame called either the Big Ten or the SEC, they wouldn't be on hold long. Uh, they that would be done. So um, now, what you're, uh, the the thing we're hearing now is uh, North Carolina is wanted by the Big Ten and the SEC. Um, so that's a good place to be. Part of that is, and look, Notre Dame is uh, will wait and and see probably until the last minute as they normally do, and I don't blame them; they're independent. But you, uh, North Carolina is really maybe the linchpin uh, that the word that we've used with this, 
Um, and the reason Notre Dame, uh, that North Carolina is so coveted is they, they are also a member of the AAU, uh, and that AAU is this prestigious <clears throat> academic title that pretty much every school in the, uh, the Big Ten has. Uh, and that is one thing we got, we always got to remember the presidents and chancellors are the ones who make these decisions and that impresses them. And that is a big deal. FSU is not, uh, AAU, but they are working on it. Uh, and I think Clemson is the same way. Uh, so we got to keep that in mind. Uh, that is going to be a big deal. Uh, now one thing that we saw this week, and I'll tie these two together, is the Big Ten commissioner, Petiti, has three main criteria for adding members to the Big Ten. There's academics in the AAU. One is market uh, TV ratings uh, and also football success. So those are some of the things that, that he likes, uh, particularly uh, in the um, Clemson is, is suing the ACC. The ACC is suing Clemson back. That merry-go-round continues, but what they're doing here, and I'll be brief with this, is no one to this point has yet to challenge the grant of rights for the ACC that goes to 2036. And uh, the problem here is, even if you leave the ACC and go to another conference, your games are still will be shown through the ACC. Uh, so anyway, without being too confusing about that, still a long way to go, but that's just a kind of a, uh, uh, a quick update as to what's happened over the last few days. Mark asked on uh, Facebook, um, excuse me, on YouTube, brought to you by Quality Plumbing, did CBS lose the rights to televise this, uh, SEC games on Saturday? Yeah, the S SEC is yeah. no longer on right. CBS. Big Ten is now on CBS. Uh SEC is strictly ESPN and SEC network now. That's right. So uh and then Clint asked, Shane, who's more likely to get an upset today, McNeese or Sanford? I like both. Uh I can I'm I crazy though, Clint. But I think both those teams could easily win their matchup. Sam Sanford today. is really, really good. Sanford plays the defense that Nolan Richardson used to in Arkansas, where you press uh, it, it's full court press all day long. 40, 40 minutes of hell, right? Yes, yes. And, and people don't like to play against teams like that. Uh, McNeese is coached by Will Wade, mm -hmm. uh, who got in all kinds of trouble in LSU, but he's still a really good basketball coach. Uh, but, but yeah, Samford is uh, Bucky Ball, that's what they call it. Bucky McMillan, their coach, uh, is a is a hot commodity in, in, uh, to be hired somewhere else. And he was a high school coach like three years ago. Uh, at Mountain Brook, I believe. That's right. Oh, he was a local guy, huh? Local guy they hired yeah. him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, yeah, he has been uh, – uh, he he rarely has ever been out of the Birmingham area. Huh. And by the way, well, by the way, UAB is also in the tournament. So Alabama, Auburn, UAB, and Samford, uh, four schools from the – the football state of Alabama or in the basketball <laughs> tournament. How about that, Shane? That's crazy. Live a healthier lifestyle with our bowl, flavorful smoothies, and our amazing food. Tropical smoothie. When you eat better, you feel better. Got Brent Beer on the Titan or Hotline. We'll have Edgar Thompson from the Orlando Sentinel talking uh, little Gators uh, second portion of today's program. Let's go to the uh, around the league. Interesting story coming out of Tuscaloosa. You know, the big offensive lineman, I'm sure people we talked about a little bit yesterday, Caden Proctor. Transfer from Bama after Saban left to Iowa. Now he's back in the portal, coming back to Bama. Crazy, crazy, you know, crazy. It really is, isn't it? Um, uh, I think he may have realized uh, maybe going home wasn't a great idea, uh, but they made it pretty clear at Iowa that uh, he won't be back. So he's in the portal, and from what we understand from the Alabama beat writers, he will be coming back. Uh, to Alabama, which would be a real plus for them on their offensive line. Uh, they got a big recruit in Daryl Duke Johnson, uh, who is number two athlete in the country, uh, linebacker and safety. All the 
contracts in Alabama were announced uh, over the the last few days. I won't go into all of them, but um, uh, Kalen DeBoer is making $10 million, uh, and uh, Greg Byrne is going to do extension, the Alabama athletic director. So, And they're having a good spring practice, and they're recruiting well. Uh, so, you know, it's kind of like spring training in baseball. Everybody's excited right now about how things are going. Yeah, Gators, uh, they're cranked back up this week. Uh, I want to say they may be scrimmaging Saturday. I can't remember if it's this Saturday or next Saturday. But uh, they got a lot of additions that they feel like out of the portal that can help this team just like anybody else. Um, what are you hearing in Gainesville? Yeah, they they really like um, the the trio. I mean, they like more than this, but I'm th- throwing these guys out. Um, Joey Slackman from Penn, the defensive lineman, uh, yeah, they really like this guy. It doesn't matter that he's from Penn. It's not Penn State. It's Penn. Um, and, and again, he's been successful. They love Gra- uh, Grayson Howard, uh, the former South Carolina linebacker. They're expecting some big things out of him. He's a hometown kid, so uh, that's going to be funny uh, uh, and to see kind of uh, uh, how that works. And I think he'll be very good for them. Jameer Grimsley coming from Alabama, he's a defensive back, uh, is also another guy that they really like. So, uh, look, for – and I know we're, uh, that folks are still trying to figure things out here uh, on the field and fans too, but uh, I, I do believe that they've got some good players. Uh, they've got a difficult schedule, as everybody's talked about. Uh, but uh, I, I still think this team could be better than people think it is, and hopefully that's going to be the case. Yeah. Uh, what's the news? Anything coming out of uh, Athens, Georgia? Yeah, they, they've had some guys who have uh, <clears throat> lost weight, gained weight type thing uh, that we've seen. One of the uh, unfortunate things that happened was one of their tight ends, um, Pierce Sperlin, he's a sophomore, had to medically retire due to a, due to a heart condition. I think the important thing there is, Shane, is they found it, right? <laughs> uh, so that, you know, it's unfortunate he won't play, but, I mean, he can still have a great life, uh, but it's good that they find these things. <clears throat> and uh, I'm sure there's some extensive medical stuff that goes in with a lot of these guys early on before the season begins, and it's really smart that they do that uh, also. But, I mean, Georgia's having a good spring uh, so far, uh, they got some guys that they've, they've got to get back, like Small Mondon, uh, who had some foot surgery, but he is healing uh, and he is doing better. So, dogs in practice and uh, Carson Beck looks good uh, so far, too. Uh, Gunnar Stockton uh, is looking fine um, so far. One thing I, that I thought was interesting was. Uh, Georgia has not made any secret that they're looking for another quarterback in the transfer portal. Now, hmm. Shane can talk to this better than anybody, but Shane, um, but basically Georgia wants a certain amount of guys in the quarterback room, right? Uh, and, and that's kind of what they're looking for. They won't delve because that's going to be important. So <clears throat> but people may wonder, why would you go get another quarterback? But Shane, Shane, and I've said over the years, uh, at times, you, you can never have too many quarterbacks. Yeah, and I mean, like you said, I, I, I guess they have Gunner Stockton penciled in as the backup or yeah. to take over. Uh, I want to say he's probably a redshirt sophomore, maybe. Um, yeah, I, I you think know, it's about right. Yeah. He may be the next guy in line. They lost the other kid, the the uh, Brock Vandergriff, I think his name is, to Kentucky, the Kentucky. right? Kentucky. Yeah. So maybe Kirby and them don't really know what they have in Gunner Stockton and maybe want to try to find somebody else just in case something happens uh, this season with True. Carson Beck. Who who knows what they're thinking there? Um, I mean, they may think they may lose Gunner Stockton to somebody next year once the season's over. Who knows? Yeah. Yes. Um, what can you tell us going on in Missouri? Well, they had their spring game last Saturday, so they are done. <laughs> Hmm. Uh, they 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 started early, um, and that's odd. But that that's what Eli Drinkwith wanted to do. They had a 
had a robust 10-9 to nine <laughs> score in the spring game. Uh, Brady Cook did well uh, in the game. Uh, he was 14-23 for 125 and a touchdown. Those aren't great numbers, but he didn't play very long uh, either. Um, they had some losses. Now, they do get a lot of guys uh, back, uh, particularly offensively, and that's going to make a difference for them. Uh, I do want to mention a couple things. They really do like a couple of guys who came from Florida. Chris McClellan is now 6'3", 320. He was all over the field um, and played well in the spring game. Uh, Tyron Hopper is a linebacker who transferred from Florida, um, is also on the team there, too. They returned their, as we mentioned, their top seven receivers. That's amazing uh, that you've got that many that come back. This is going to be a pretty good football team. They do lose Cody Schrader, the running back, uh, but if they can cover their um, uh, their defensive deficiencies, Blake Baker, their defensive coordinator, went to LSU. Uh, so, Shane, would it surprise you if this is a pretty good team again? Yeah, I mean, they'll they'll be solid. Uh, they don't really have a very difficult schedule either, so look out for Missouri. Good, uh, good point, South, yes. South Carolina ha- has hired a name that a lot of people around the SEC might remember, and, uh, and just another analyst for Shane Beamer. Oh, yeah, Mike Shula, the former <laughs> Alabama coach, has joined the South Carolina staff. He has been all over the place a little bit. Obviously, he was in Alabama from 03 to 06 before Nick Saban came. And he has been an NFL guy. He's been at Jacksonville, Carolina, at Denver. Uh, he was offense coordinator for the Panthers for a while, and also offense coordinator for the Giants for a while. Recently, he was with the Buffalo Bills. Now, look, from a – I'm curious if you know him, by the way. Um, He has done a really good job with the quarterbacks. He did a really good job in Alabama. And I I can tell you right now, Shula was fired in Alabama – Basically, because they wanted him to uh, <clears throat> to get another offensive coordinator, um, uh, or to get an offensive coordinator, take some of the load off of him, he refused to do that, and that was kind of the straw that broke the camel's back. But I do know this too, <clears throat> when Tim Tebow talks about uh, his time and his recruitment, he has a lot of good things to say about Mike Shula that they had a good relationship. Uh, along that time too, so just wanted to mention that yes, he is. Uh, he's an alley. He's off the field, uh, but he is. Uh, I think he he should do a good job for South Carolina. Yeah, you know, actually, Mike. My first three years in the NFL with the Bears, he was the tight ends coach. So really, yep, yes, I know Mike and A um, and M. You know they got a new coach, uh, Connor Wigman was the starter. I believe he got injured last year, and this Jalen Henderson guy came in played pretty well. Did. What are you hearing from a quarterback battle out at a and Well, Connor Wigman is a starter, um, according to the media there. But Henderson, as you mentioned, really played well. I mean, he completed basically 70% of his passes, six touchdowns and two interceptions. Max Johnson, if you remember that name, uh, transferred to North Carolina. Um, Wigman's healthy, uh, and he's doing fine. I'm sure they're b- being, you know, r- rather slow with him and bringing him back. Uh, but this could be a pretty good team. Elko has done a good job with A&M. They've got the big game with Texas that may end up on Thanksgiving night. So uh, look for uh, an interesting year from Texas A&M. Radware is a family-owned business that prides itself in excellent customer service while providing quality and affordable promotional products and customized apparel. A few more minutes with Brent Beard on the Titan More Highline, courtesy of Comfort Temp. Brent, uh, give us a little rundown of what's going on in Tallahassee and Coral Gables. Yep, be glad to. They're in uh, Port State started on Tuesday, so they're up and going. They're excited about some of their transfers. 
Malik ben, a lot of these guys from Alabama, uh, Malik Benson, uh, Eric Little, Benson's wide receiver, Little, Little is defensive back, Rodell Williams, that a lot of people will remember, uh, who was wide open on the last play against Michigan that if um, – Jalen Miro had seen him. It, it would have been an easy touchdown, probably. But they like Williams too. Lawrence Torfilla comes back, so um, uh, so Lawrence Torfilla and Rodell Williams will be in the backfield. That's a pretty good backfield, frankly. At Miami, Cam Ward has excited everybody, uh, and they've got some pretty good players coming back. Xavier Restapro from one, Jacoby George. Uh, is a wide receiver. Jalen Rivers is healthy and off, on the offensive line. Mark Fletcher is a running back. And, you know, something to keep your eye on, one of their running backs, Henry Parrish, at Miami is expected to go into the transfer portal and go to Ole Miss. Mm-hmm. So, uh, Shane, uh, Ole Miss really needs another transfer, don't they, bud? <laughs> hey, the, the uh, Grove Collect, the Grove Collective. I think that's what they call them. They love yeah. to shell out cash. Yeah, yeah, and they have got a tremendous football team coming back because of that. Uh, so uh, we'll watch and see if Paris does so. But Florida State, Miami, so far, spring is going well, and they're uh, and they are excited about that. So so far. So far, so good. A uh, question on the Tignamar uh, text line from Josh in Mississippi. He wants to know, Brent, do you think Clemson will come to the SEC eventually? Uh, I, I think because of the AAU stuff, um, the SEC may be more likely. And, and again, uh, what they are doing is uh, they are challenging this grant of rights. They, they basically let Florida State do the heavy lifting here. And then they quietly well, felt the same way about this situation that Florida State does, uh, but they are now trying to uh, uh, to get in the fray themselves. So I would say between the two that they would be a more natural fit for the SEC, uh, but that's still got a, a ways to go. But because of this lawsuit, yeah, it's uh, Clemson is a SEC type school. I just I'm just going off what. You know, I said sure. in that meeting with Greg Sankey, I, I think it will. If they do expand, I think they're leaning Virginia, North Carolina. Yes. Um, last thing before we get you out of here, text on the Titan our text line from Bob in Charlotte. He says, "I'd like to know who Brent has in his final four. Well, I have that, and I've got Houston, Tennessee, Arizona, and Iowa State." So uh, that that's a little bit of a surprise. Um, I've got Florida going as far as being on the verge of going to the uh, to the Final Four themselves and getting beat by Houston. Me too. Uh, uh, it's going to be uh, it's going to also be interesting if Kentucky and Florida play. There actually is a way that Alabama and Mississippi State could play. I don't think Alabama is going to is going to last that long, but you really don't know. But I do think Tennessee may get uh, off the snide and, and, and be able to get there. I've got Houston winning the whole thing, but it is uh, it, it's going to be a fascinating tournament and uh, really exciting. I still think the Gators have got great depth, a great inside-outside game. Love the guards and the bigs. Uh, and, and, and I'm telling you, Shane, if they if they can, I think if they play well and get some early confidence. Uh, that they could go a long way in the, in this, which would be incredible uh, for Todd Golden, what he's going to do for this basketball program. Yeah. Brent, great stuff as always. Enjoy the games, and we will talk to you next week, my man. Look forward to it, pal. Take care. That's Brent Beer, our college football analyst and Heisman Trophy voter, joining us on the uh, Titan and More Hotline, courtesy of Comfort Temp. Take a quick time out. Come back. If you got any questions for Edgar Thompson, he'll be happy to answer them. He'll be joining us in just a second. You're watching and listening to Pot Up Matthews in the morning. We want to take this moment to thank our sponsors who keep the show going and pay the bills. Our premium sponsors are Crime Prevention Security Systems, large enough to serve you, small enough to care. 
Titan MRI, Gainesville's only locally owned and operated MRI facility. Melden Law, the only official injury and accident law attorneys of the Florida Gators. Peachland Dental, Gator Nation's first choice for dentistry in Port Charlotte. QC Kinetics, live pain-free with QC Kinetics. Campus USA, put some star power to work in your financial life with Campus USA Credit Union. Comfort Temp, comfort is our business, peace of mind is our promise. Dave & Buster's Eat, Drink, Play, Watch. Radwear, your local provider of promotional products, uniforms, and apparel. Our gridiron sponsors are Auto ER, UF Bookstores, Silverback Concrete, Ruse Ogre State Farm Insurance, Radwear, F45, Quality Plumbing. Our touchdown sponsors are Adams Ribs, Gator Dominoes, Celebrate Primary Care, Gator Bait Media, Okito America, Style Cuts, Ironwood Golf Course, Big Mills Cheese Steak, McDonald's of Gainesville, 84 Lumber, Dowling Signs, Baker Sporting Goods, Silver Q Billiards and Sports Bar. If you're interested in promoting your business on the show, call Freddie at 352-284-3733. If you like what we're doing here, make sure to follow us and support the businesses that support us. Pro football legend Emmett Smith understands your joint pain. It does not surprise me that there are a ton of people out there that's in pain. That's why Emmett is such a proponent of QC Kinetics, offering real lasting joint pain relief with non-surgical, all-natural biologic treatments. Whether it's a joint pain, ankle pain, shoulder pain, neck pain, back pain, hip pain, any kind of pain, the body eventually will break down when it's under that much stress. That stress can cloud your judgment to the point that you'll just say yes to the scalpel or yes to another prescription of pain pills. But maybe it's time for a second opinion from QC Kinetics. The reason why I would recommend this is because the natural biologics that QC Kinetics is providing you gives your body a chance to naturally heal itself. Restorative regenerative solutions are here. Get lasting relief and live your life. Call QC Kinetics 352-400-4550. That's 352-400-4550. QC Kinetics 352-400-4550. Welcome back to the Crime Prevention Security System Studios, large enough to serve you, small enough to care. Ruse Ogre State Farm Office is a team of dedicated insurance professionals ready to help life go right with the right insurance options for you and your family. Visit ogreinsurance.com. Give them a call at 352-240-1779. Going to go back to the Titan More Hotline, courtesy of Comfort Temp. And it's Edgar Thompson from the Orlando Sentinel. Good morning, Edgar. How you doing? Hey, man. Been a while. Good to see you. Yep. Uh, Gators basketball tip off tomorrow around 430-ish against the Colorado mm-hmm. Buffaloes. I absolutely love the bracket we're in. I have us going to the Elite Eight and losing to the Houston Cougars. But if we can score enough, you could upset them. What, what do you think the Gators can do in this tournament, Edgar? I agree with you. I think Houston is would be – those guys, they lock <laughs> you down, man. Yeah. That that's that would be a tough matchup, but that's a few wins, and we'll see if they can get there. But I, I like the team. I've liked it a lot this year. I was a little skeptical early on, and the, the leads, you know, squandering leads is still a concern. And that's kind but of everybody why- does. Every team does it. You know, I – I think a lot of people forget that the shot clock era has changed. I mean, look at look at AM. I mean, they blew an 18 point lead to us. Mm-hmm. Uh I I understand it, but there there's there's so many runs through the course of a basketball game that sometimes it's a you game can't of control runs. it. No, you make a great point. And and that's the point that some people have made to me when I'm like, man, why can't they hold a lead? And and well, it's a game of runs. So if that's the case, you got to like this team. I mean, losing Han Logton is a, a big blow, horrible for the kid. That's just a nasty injury. Yeah. His recovery is going to be arduous, to say the least. And uh, you lose a rim protector, you lose your best offensive rebounder. The guy average on his four offensive rebounds a game. And that's significant. So we'll see how they overcome that. Though I do love Condon's effort. Houck has really come on. Samuels had a great year. Really surprised me. I mean, he's been – I wasn't so sure, you know. I mean, his stats were okay. Didn't really 
I mean, he started not a ton. And I'm thinking, yeah. And he's been great. He's a very good, you know, runs hard. There's good system for him, you know, because he's he like he runs the floor well. And then yes. uh, you know, Poland's fantastic leader. Teams are gonna throw a zone at him though. And well, the key, they, the key, yeah. to, if they do throw a zone, I mean, as I've said, you just don't. If you can't play zone, you cannot call. I was zone. Th- if they can, if they can play zone, yeah. I mean, a lot of coaches it. do not like it, and a lot of kids cannot play zone defense. And the key to the zone is making shots. And if you watched whoever, I can't remember who threw a little bit of zone at us in the turn. I think it was Georgia. It was the six to eight foot range in the paint that our big guys couldn't make the shots. I mean, they're wide ass open, couldn't knock them down. So uh, I love the basketball team. Uh, speaking of the well, basketball team. I didn't even mention my favorite player, who's Clayton. I love Clayton. I'm telling, I, I said this on the show yesterday, Edgar. This backcourt to me is the best the Flores ever had since I've been watching them. Better you know, than the M&M Maxwell boys? And Mo- hmm? I, that's what I said, better than the M&M boys. Maxwell and Mo, but that was for my time. I'm talking about when I what I've seen. Uh, they're just dogs, man. And you know, I know Tori and Green and Lee were great. There's no question about that. They won two national titles, but these guys are different players. And Walter Clayton is one of the best athletes to ever put to walk on this campus. And he he just does everything in slow motion. I I just love his demeanor and the love the way he plays. Um, well, what's funny? So when they scrimmage, I'm sorry. When they okay. first did their scrimmage, just I think I said it on this show, just I looked at him and you just the physical stature, just the way he carried himself and moved. I was like, man, this guy is a tremendous athlete. You could just see that. You know, he was a DB that was recruited. He played with Javon Dexter, uh, Lake Wales. Um, their boys. He would and, be a big DB man because I mean he yeah. is he's taller than I am, and I'm a legit six three. No, he he's a he's a stud. I mean, he high volume shooter doesn't hit them all. Who does? But I just love his tough mindedness more than anything. I think he's just a tough competitor, and you know I like the demeanor of this team. And so yeah, that's all I had to say. I didn't want to forget mentioning him because he's actually the player on the team I've liked the best all year. Yep. All right. Speaking of basketball, and then we'll move on. Uh, the- Text on the Titan or text line from William. He says, Edgar, Shane has given us his thoughts on Riley Kugel. I would like to hear yours. Well, I just wrote a story, in fact, last night uh, on that before the game, the Colorado Boise game, which was a miserable basketball game. But <laughs> oh God, terrible. My, my dad's a big University of Virginia fan. He went to business school there. Oh. There was a tweet yesterday. <laughs> I mean, that was so funny. It was some guy, I guess, who did, it might have been a joke, but I think it was just some dude who did like a halftime thing and he was through shooting shots over the basket and stuff. And I sent it to my dad and he's like, over it, thanks. My dad was not happy. And he's usually not curt with me. But um, no, I wrote a story on Kugel last night and just how, I mean, it's kind of the miss. It's a mystery what's going on with them. I mean, he opens the season 10 of 15, 23 points. You, you know, he had 24 and 25 in consecutive games. Through seven games, he's averaging 15. He's looking like the player we thought he was going to be for the most part. But there was this, this body language thing early in the season. You saw it. He just kind of seemed attached with his teammates, frustrated at times kind of just not there and it just progressed and then he gets moved to a six man role and didn't take to that quickly but then yeah he had that Auburn game and it's like okay he's finally kind of found his comfort zone and it's I think he's had a one or two double figure games maybe one since then I can't explain it man the guy I think Came back thinking after last year, averaging 18 points the last eight games when Colin Castleman broke his hand, that he was going to be, he came back, didn't go to the NBA, didn't explore that or try to go to the NBA. And he thought he was going to be the guy. And then he's not. And you got Poland, you got Clayton, you got all these other pieces. 
and he just didn't find a way to fit in with it, maybe. I, I don't know. And he's been frustrated. There was a lot of pressure, a lot of expectations, whether within, who knows, family, friends, the world. It's a lot to handle. I mean, he's 20 years old. He just hasn't handled it, it seems. I don't know enough about it, but that's my speculation. I don't know what yours is. No, my, well, my spec, I mean, I know nothing. I just, I, I, I said yesterday, the eye in the sky doesn't lie. Yes, he's had those moments, but con a consistent player is what coaches want to play. Mm -hmm. And he's not one of the better basketball players on our team. And I, that's, that's what my eyes have seen all year long. And as a coach, you can't play him. Now, having said that, I think he will play some now because uh, I think our rotation is going to change a little bit with Micah being out. Um, we may go small sometimes and run a little bit more, uh, but we'll see. We'll see tomorrow what happens. Well, when he's playing uh, well, Shane, when he like that Auburn game, that first half against Auburn's is going to half of basketball as they play all year. Yeah, uh, you know maybe the Alabama 105 point game. I mean that was explosive. But that Auburn game before that one, they looked unbeatable that first half, and he played great. So when he's playing well, everyone's playing well around him. They are better. I think. Yeah, I think. Cool. I think that they're they're the they're at their best when Will Richard makes shots. Well, that's he's, true. He is the X factor, in my opinion. Uh, text on the Titan or text line. It says uh, Edgar got more, more questions asked and answered Sunday evening at the players than with Billy during the entire season. <laughs> well, I think I had two questions for Shuffler. Uh, I well, think I, he was I, I appreciate you. I appreciate you listening. <laughs> or you guys were listening to Shuffler, not me. But, I mean, it was nice that you noticed. But, yeah, look, that Shuffler performance, we're going to talk about it anyway, if you don't mind. Yes. That was unbelievable. That pars his first three holes. You're like, yeah, he's not going to have it today. And then eagle on four, which, you know, 92 yarder right in the hole. And then this was gone from there. And he missed a five footer on 13. I mean, he could have shot 63. It's the lowest final round score, 64, along with Davis Love in 03, which I ha happened to be at that player's helping out Craig Dolch. He's a big golf writer at Palm Beach Post. It was my first pro golf tournament. And, um, Davis Love shot 64 in the rain, basically, which was like unbelievable. And couple shot 90, uh, 64, 96. So he could have set that record, tied the record for biggest comeback, five shots down, and uh, just an unbelievable performance. And then you had three studs, you know, British Open champion, U.S. Open champion, Olympic gold medalist, all with the shot on 18 to birdie. Gary Van Sickle, longtime Sports Illustrated golf writer, who's now kind of freelances and stuff. We sat next to each other all week. He he's great. You know, he's been around the sport for 40 plus years. He looked to me afterwards, good. That might be the best players of, of all time today. Now, the problem is where was John Rahm? Where was Kepka? Mm -hmm. Where was Cam Smith, who won it two years ago? I think there were five former champions that weren't in the field because of Liv. This Liv thing, I'm sick of it, man. I am so done with Liv. I mean, John Rahm talked about it the other day. Did you hear about this? Mm -mm. Kind of going, God, you know, sure wish, sure miss like Riviera, which he won last year. Sure, like, sure really love the players. Like he watches golf. Like he, he said he almost fell out of his chair when Wyndham Clark hit the putt that horse shoot out. He hits the putt in, it went in and horse shoot out, if you saw. It was unbelievable. He said he like dropped an expletive. So he's watching PGA Tour golf. He's engaged. I think he, I mean, he got $500 million or whatever, but he's regretting that he can't play in these tournaments. And it's just, it's just taken away from the sport. Because remember last year, Scotty Scheffler was playing great golf, but John Rahm and him were going toe to toe. He beat Rom once, Rom beat him once, he beat Rom. He, you know, remember that back and forth they had oh, last yeah. year? Yeah. And Rom won the Masters. So the Masters is going to be phenomenal. That's all I can say, as always. But it's going to be better than ever this year with you got the live and flux coming back. Yeah, it'll be fun for sure. I mean, I I I I wish those guys were not with the live because I mean, I think, like you said, Rom, Cam Smith, DJ. 
I mean, there's some, there's some of the best players in the world, no question. But Bryson uh, is playing incredible golf too right now. Bryson. Yeah, yeah. Um, but real quick before we move on to football, do you mm -hmm. think they need to change the uh, uh, Sawgrass, the stadium course, to a par seventy? I mean, you make a good point. It was only playing seven thousand and change on Saturday. I mean, 7,050 yards for these guys is it's like a way too short. Part. But I'm talking about like a whole 11 and 16. I love the excitement on 16. I don't know if there's some way they can take that tee box and move it more around towards a 15 green where they really have to. There's like, some you know, room. Get... There's some room back. You've been yeah, there. But but there's two holes behind have... it. They could move it back 20, 30 yards. I mean, to have 58 Eagles in a golf tournament is just stupid. No, no, they can move that tee box back. Gary Smet, Smetter, you know Smetter, of course, been mm -hmm. around for TU golf writer, and I mean he's the mayor of Ponte Vedra, man. That week, I mean he's been going, he's been to TPC since 1981, mm -hmm. right? He's been to every tournament. I mean it's unbelievable. So we were talking about, I said afterwards because Greg Norman shot 24 under par in 1994, and they blew up the course because they're like no more of this. Now, it was apparently wet that week, and this is the first 20 under score since then. And he said they're making changes. They blew it on 12, man. I can't stand 12. That was – it was a boring-ish kind of par four. I like 12. You do? Because I mean, it's, Shuffler, it's a it's a risk-reward because – Most – nobody drives it. The fact Scheffler drove it was amazing. That was unreal. Most guys well, are Xander drunk. drove it over the green. Yeah, on the last they, day. So, I well, like that because well, the you balls. Gotta, go ahead. I just like it because you know if you hit it, you know a couple guys kind of put a little hook on it and it went in the water. Um, you could probably tweak it a little bit, though. I agree. Well, I'll say, and and to conclude, is I prefer Bay Hill, not as a golf course or aesthetically at all. I mean, Bay Hill is just a big ballpark, but man. That's a hard golf course, man. I mean, that is a test. Yeah. And TPC just isn't. Now, it was soft, but it's a gorgeous golf course. And you've played it. I've only played it one time. But when you go watch it, these guys are so freaking good. Like, I'm standing on the 4T box, and you're looking out at that shot they have. And you're like, where are you hitting this ball? You look, you look at some of these holes where you're like, where are they going? And then they just take these aggressive lines. And sometimes they're just hitting three wood. They, they're just so good. It's like I've told people... You played like pickup basketball, right? Yeah. Right. I mean, well, if we played whatever level, and and you're like, oh yeah, well, these guys, NBA guys play with their elbow above the rim all night, right? They're above the rim. Well, that's so how good these guys are at that sport. It's something oh, that that it it the, is. I can't even explain to people how good pro golfers are. I mean, it is nuts. Well, that's what um, I'm saying. Like, if you go yeah. play like at Gainesville Health and Fitness above the rim all day, then maybe you can appreciate what pro golf is. Yeah. They're doing it at a level and taking on shots and lines. I mean, Scheffler, the lines he was taking at Bay Hill, and he's just hitting at places where you're like, you're going there and is blow just easily. They're they're just they're they're amazing, man. Yeah. Uh, Andy had a question on Facebook Live brought to you by Melton Law. I want to know, Edgar, have you, uh, has Billy mentioned anything about throwing the ball deep this year? Feels like our wide receiver room is loaded. Well, I had have, I have Bay Hill. I haven't heard Billy yet. We get him Saturday. We're get, get a full practice today, though, Shane. Really? I know, I know you get that anytime you want, but we we get a full practice today we got pro day here that started up just a minute ago ricky's not doing anything which is no surprise um so really it's like ricky and kingsley to and you know i've been a big defender of dan mullen on this show in some ways uh on the podcast i do with mark long for sure now i haven't defended everything dan did but i i don't think he you know i think he did some good things well, I'll tell you one thing he didn't do, and we all know this, leave the talent in good shape. When you got right. nobody at Pro Day today, Ricky no, was I a had, transfer, right? I you got a, Kingsley. Uh, that's it. I had a uh, a buddy of mine that's a scout 
texted me wanting to know if I was coming. I was like, no, I got to go out of town. And uh, he's like, y'all have nobody. The Pearsall kid will play in the league for a long time. But other than that, nobody. I was like, not surprised. Well, that's the Dan Mullen effect. And, you know, he deserves some criticism for that, um, for sure. And then uh, we get Billy on Saturday. So, yeah, we'll talk to him about that. And okay. we'll, we'll see. But, you know, can Graham Mertz throw the downfield throw? We've, we've talked about that a lot here. And maybe he can, maybe he can't. I, I just don't know. The little sample sizes we've gotten of it. I just don't know what his, what his downfield accuracy is. I think you're more. Well, solid. I think they got to practice it. That's one thing. I don't know if we practice downfield throwing. I mean, you can't you can't call a play in the game and just expect to hit it. You know, um, I watched one practice uh, Tuesday. Graham is clearly the best thrower on the football team. Not even close. What's DJ um, look like? Uh, I, he's very raw. Uh, I said yesterday that he's got kind of a unique, weird release, and he throws off his front foot a lot. Um, so, I mean, look, he's very athletic. There's no question. I don't think he's a great thrower right now, but maybe he can become. I think Graham is clearly the quarterback and the best thrower on the team. Um, but back to the deep balls, you have to you you have to have a period in your practice, and maybe they do it, and I already left, but where you practice nothing but deep balls. But then and you – by by doing that, you wear out your receivers' legs running deep balls. So uh, there's a time and place for it, but uh, I think Graham could definitely be a deep ball thrower. But we got to call him. You got to call. I've said it multiple times. Minimum of eight a game. I've never heard you say that before. Oh, I'm joking, you, man. Oh, oh. <laughs> I was like, that's. You I mean, say you it got during. To. You say it at halftime. You say it on here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because nothing bad can happen. If it the worst thing that happens is it gets intercepted, it's as good as a punt. But you're probably going to get pass interference in today's college football. It's That's true. what Florida State did against us here in the game. They threw like five deep balls, and we got interference every freaking time. All right, um, John's question is: If Ricky doesn't do anything, what are the coachings coming for? Well, they still it it, it may not be the head. There might coaches. not be that many. Yeah, it, it's it's they just send these scouts. These NFL teams have scouts like Gators have analysts, so they send them all over the country to these different deals. And um, yeah, there may not be many here today. I don't know. So, what else you got going on, Edgar? Before we get you out of here, you got any? Well, I was just going to say your Riley Kugel article. It's running. It's going to be online here soon. I wrote a story on Austin Armstrong today, actually. That's online right now. He was great the other night. And he's taken total ownership, man. And and I like it. And Sale talked the other night, took some ownership or a lot, and talked about, you know, issues with last year's line, injuries, law, you know, people were there was injuries, there was maybe a miss in the portal, maybe you guys playing out of position. There was a lot of issues on that offensive line, especially with Tarquin leaving at the last minute, Ethan White leaving, things like that. I'm a lot more optimistic. You know me. I'm not very optimistic about much. After talking to these guys, Austin Armstrong's comment is when you're a young coach and you're having early success and then don't, you go from boy wonder to boy blunder. <laughs> and he, he was funny. And I think he's to, he really likes having Ron Roberts around. He called him like almost his football dad in a way, a mentor. Yeah. I think he's going to feel a lot more comfortable I think that that's going to be a nice mix. The new defensive staff, Chapman's getting a lot of rave reviews. Will Harris is proven. I have some optimism this defense is going to be much better this year. Uh, we'll see. Has to be. Um, has to. It's imperative. It has to be. But it has sounds like it sounds like they have a much better mix of coaches. You certainly have this veteran mix of transfers coming in, whether it's Turner, Douglas, Bridges. You know, Pup Howard, I think, is getting a lot of, you know, good reviews. So I, I, I'm curious to see how it all plays out. I haven't seen put eyes on the team yet. So I'm yeah. looking forward to watching. Uh, last thing here, Christopher says on YouTube, brought to you by Quality Plumbing. Lagway has a mentor and Mertz needs to be like a sponge and just soak up all that information. Well, th that's a great point because Graham is just being around him just a little bit, just watching him, how he works all last year. He's a pro, man, and there's nothing better for a young quarterback 
to learn how a guy does it the right way. And so I agree, I agree with that statement 100%. Uh, Edgar, time has gone by, my man. We appreciate your time. Let everybody know how they can follow you on Twitter and read all your stuff. Uh, OS Gators, I tell you, man, I've I've kind of not been tweeting much at all. I'm trying to revive my Twitter presence, but I'm just kind of over Twitter, man. Just, I understand. It, it just understand. gets old. Everybody's yeah. just outraged constantly on Twitter, man. And I mean, you can't say a thing anymore. But anyhow, appreciate the time. I, I, I like this forum a lot better than Twitter. <laughs> well, we appreciate your time. That's Edgar Thompson from the Orlando Sentinel. Join us on the Titan More Hotline, courtesy of Comfort Tip. Have a great day. Enjoy the games today, and we'll talk Gator hoops in the morning. Have a great day, folks. Take care. See you, Shane.